All right, welcome to the 11th episode of the Kentucky Elk Hunting Webinar Series. Um, so we wanted to take a minute and kind of clarify what's going on with the leftover regulated area sign up. Uh, so that opens Monday, August 8th at 8 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so again, August 8th, 8 a.m. Eastern. So pay attention to that for the Central Time folks. That'll be seven o'clock your time. But essentially, all the leftover regulated areas open up on a first come, first served basis through a sign up on my profile uh, again on Monday the 8th. So it seems like we've gotten several questions about this in the last uh, week or so. We're going to go ahead and make this video uh, a week early just to give time, give people time to think about that. Um, and so as we move through this, we'll have Joe work through like he always does through uh, through my profile and show you just exactly what you need to do. Um, before we get to that, just one housekeeping thing. So we've been working on updating some info associated with the regulated areas. Uh, if you've already signed up, if you if you were selected for a regulated area, check that info out. Uh, you can go back through my profile, view the regulated area, see that info. Uh, one thing I always want to let people know, and just in, in conversations with some people that have been out there scouting, uh, just pay attention to access points. Uh, those aren't the only places that you can access those properties by, but they're the ones that we've scouted and more or less verified over the last year. Uh, an important thing is these access points can change. We're not out there at every one every single day. This is not, uh, you know, a central Kentucky WMA with a yellow gate that gets weed eated around. This is just a way to get on that property and they change. Uh, gates can pop up out of nowhere. Uh, equipment can be parked blocking your way. Rocks. This, <laughs> yes, this happens every single year. So don't think you're going to show up to somewhere with like a, you know, a big sign above the gate that's like enter here. It's some of these are little pull offs. Some of them are little gates with a place to park. Um, some of them are the side of the, you know, place to pull off the highway and walk up the walk up the mountain. So spend some time looking at our maps, familiarize yourself with those access points and then get out there and scout them. Don't leave it to season that just because we've got a dot there that means that it's still there. Uh, with the rain we've had uh, today and, and most of this week, those access points might just disappear and wash down the river. Um, so, you know, don't get don't get caught uh, caught unprepared on on those. So just a little bit, you know, it's, it seems to be a main question, especially with some of these uh, RAs that are that are broken up into little chunks kind of scattered all out through there. Um, not the best access and they they do tend to change. Um, so. Let's jump into this thing again. We're going to have Joe run you through uh, how to jump on that leftover sign up. And I'll say this date 10 more times. Put August 8th at 8 a.m. Eastern on your calendar. If you're without an RA and would like to jump into one, one that's got an open spot, um, be sitting there at the computer, on the phone, on the iPad, ready to roll at, uh, on, on that Monday morning. So, all right, Joe, give us a run through. All right, let me set up the screen share. I know these are everybody's favorites to do. <laughs> All right, so we'll run through this one more time. This is your My Profile. Hopefully you're familiar with it uh, by now. Uh, but right here at the very top, the screen banner, it lets you know that you're drawn. And it's now been updated to show what unit you're in after we went through that process, the secondary drawing. Uh, again, I've got a, for my test account, I've got a commission elk tag. This is not my elk tag. It's just our test account. But for argument's sake, I'm in unit six. So let's say all I have is a unit six um, only permit right now, or that's the only spot I have, and I want to pick up an RA on August 8th. Uh, you can go down here to the regulated areas list, um, and you'll see everything that's not in my unit, everything that's not unit six is red, which is there to signify that that's not an option to me because you cannot hunt outside of your assigned unit. Um, but you go down here to unit six where everything's in green. And these are the properties that, you know, that are valid for your permit type. Um, we don't have a good way, you know, for you to just scroll and look at this and say, okay, of these five properties, there are X number of open spots available. We don't have that, unfortunately. Uh, so you will have to go through here and click the view button on all of them. 
Uh, the first thing you'll notice up here at the top where your name will be, it'll say there's currently an open spot for a commission hunter, uh, which means there is a commission permit spot available on this property. This does not necessarily mean that the spot is open or full or, or not. Uh, just saying, hey, this is a property where your permit type is valid for. Um, so you'll go down here and look. And this is where you'll be able to see, uh, you know, if there's a spot open for you or not. So on the commission permit here, this one slash one, it means that there's one spot available for a commission permit on this property. And it means it is not currently full. So um, it's, it's available for somebody to sign up to on, on August 8th. If you go over here and look at, uh, you know, Calgon 2 or any of the other permit types, you see these zero out of six, zero out of twos. Uh, that means so for archery, there are six spots available for archery hunters, um, but the zero means that they are, are all full right now uh, after the, the secondary drawing. Um, if it said, 2-6, that means there are six spots available, but there are two that are open and up for grabs. Um, if you go back up here to where your name is, uh, it says there's currently an open spot and it tells you, you know, August 8th at 8 a.m. is when it opens. Right here, there will be a little blue button that says add spot. Uh, John, can you see this? Is it still yep, sharing? I got it. Um, if you go on and look at it today, you can't sign up right now because there's, there's some code that's hardwired in there that won't, you know, won't allow this to happen until August 8th at 8 a.m. But at 8 a.m., this is what you're going to see. You may sign up for your permit type on this regulated area. And there's the blue button sign up. Uh, so that's what it's going to look like. If you, uh, are a hunter and you want to release your spot, say you got awarded something that you put in for and you decide you don't want to use it that day or use it anymore, there will be a little button here that says release spot. And you can do that as well. Um, but yes, that's uh, that's how it all, that's how the system will work. Uh, we'll go back and we're still working on, uh, on updating some new information for you guys so you can see how everything shook out. Um, hopefully by the next week, this area selection data and drawing stat stuff will be updated for you to see, but, um, essentially that's the nuts and bolts of, uh, what's, what we're about to do. What else we need to cover here? And so give, I think that covers the nuts and bolts. Like you said, give everybody a rundown, just remind them. I mean, these RAs are predominantly private property that people have opened up for hunting. So how do they get credit for opening this property up? All right. So the way that these work, uh, these landowners, well, I think we've mentioned before, but they pretty much tell me how many people they want to allow on the property at any one time and, you know, any, anything else specific, right? So, uh, like this property, they don't want, you know, any trees to be damaged or no baiting, anything like that. Uh, they can pretty much set the rules of what they want and they tell me how many spots they want. So that's what you all have been looking at here uh, and signing up for. When these hunters harvest an elk, the landowners get credit uh, towards earning an elk permit of their own. Um, I don't know if the, don't think that the control number's on this one. I think you have to be signed up to show you the control number. Yeah, I agree. It'll be up there at the top top left. Yeah. So actually, when you have a spot, and many of you, you know, after the secondary drawing, you've already got one. Um, it'll tell you right here in the review hunt unit regulated areas you were selected for, say hunt unit six, tug fork, and then it'll tell you your control number right there off the bat. I think it'll also tell you when you go to that page. Um, but pretty much if you harvest an elk, you input this control number and that associates your harvest with that landowner uh, so they can go through and make sure we get them the appropriate amount of credit uh, that they need. Uh, let's see, you want to talk about anything, the spots switching? I think that was on our list. Yeah, that's what, uh, yeah, talk about the honor system, talk about the, um you know, if people, you know, how spots might open up during the season, that kind of whole spill. No, sorry for ramble, but this one where we don't have all the new functionality up where it's not actually August 8th, 
Uh, it's a little bit different to navigate and explain. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, we give you a control number that's associated with your, your property. And if you do harvest an elk, we ask you to input that during the telecheck process. Uh, so it is kind of on the honor system where we are hoping that you all will input the correct name. But if if I've seen that you know, you're signed up for one of these properties and you harvest an elk and I don't see a control number associated with it, uh, myself or somebody else in our program will probably call you to verify. Uh, and that's for two reasons. One, obviously we want to make sure that the landowners get the appropriate amount of credit uh, towards their elk permits, which then in turn keeps them enrolled in the programs. Uh, number two, if you actually didn't kill it on that property, then I'm gonna go through and open that spot up. Um, you know, like we've mentioned before, we have limited numbers of spots on these places and we want to give everybody an opportunity to hunt them if we can. Uh, so if you kill an elk off that property, we want that spot to be open um, so that we can let somebody else take it. And along those same lines too, if you, you know, if you've got a, a spot uh, that you were, you know, you put in for and were awarded and that you don't want to hunt, you know, whether it's you just don't want to go there, your outfitter doesn't want to go there, whatever it may be, you can drop your spot at any time. Uh, so somebody else can can jump on it and, and utilize that. Yeah, and you only use the control number if the elk is harvested on the voucher area you're signed up for. So, you know, good a good example is is a unit three hunter. They might be signed up for Thunder Ridge. They may go down and check out Boone Forest WMA one afternoon, get into elk, kill one. They wouldn't use the control number for that elk, but we do ask that you you know once you've killed that elk and telechecked it go in and drop that Thunder Ridge spot, even if it's Wednesday afternoon. I mean, we might be able to get a bull gun hunter in there on Wednesday afternoon or evening yep. and, you know, get them, a, get them an elk that day. So open that spot up. A little bit of its honor system, like Joe said, we, I think we surprised several people on, you know, Saturday afternoons or Sunday afternoons when we call and ask um you know we're gonna have your phone number when you telecheck an elk it records what phone that was telechecked from that's more than likely going to be your cell phone <laughs> so we can we can get in uh get in contact with you pretty quick it'll be a quick conversation just make sure everything's straight make sure we haven't um you know inadvertently entered a control number or failed to enter one and uh we'll get all that straight um so that brings back the point of if you're a hunter that doesn't have an RA during your season, be looking for open spots. Uh, you know, in the evening when you get back to the motel or campsite, see if anything's opened up. And I will tell you that it does every year. Mm -hmm. um, so hit that regulated areas list, look through it. Uh, might yeah. be able to get on a spot for a couple of days. Yeah, you'll still, like I said, there's not a good way to just – click on this page and then you know it produces a list you'll have to go through each property but it does happen mm -hmm. and i would say about noon every day is a good time to check uh, kind of depending on the season because we start we you know especially during your gun hunts we're looking at them first thing in the morning you know yesterday's harvest and then starting that process of trying to verify just to get it up as early as we can um, noon or in the evening would be the best times to look if you're going to that's a good point yeah we Check it frequently. Um, it probably won't be a whole lot happening after this date, after August 8th, until season actually starts. But once season does start, uh, we generally move through some spots fairly, fairly frequently. Yep. And then I had a fellow I asked this week, um, you know, he's got, he signed up for an RA uh, and he doesn't want to switch. What should he do for this, uh, for this August 8th sign up? Nothing. You Nothing. don't have to do anything. Just yep. uh, hang out. Go scout it. Yep. If you're in an RA and you're happy, it's not like we're we're not changing. If you're drawn for an RA, you'll still have that RA after the sign up. You're signed up in that spot, mm -hmm. uh, so you don't need to do a thing. And actually, you're better off not getting in there and clicking around on anything. Uh, you know, don't don't inadvertently release that spot unless you want to release it and try for something else, um, which which you can do. I guess while we're on that topic, uh, we you know kind of like. Um, when you were putting in your selections and you hit clear and then there's a, a pop-up says, are you sure we did build that in here too? So if you did, you know, you can't just accidentally click release spot. You will have like a two stage verification, but if you somehow still managed to release your spot and you didn't mean to give John or I a call, we'll, we'll help you get taken care of. 
Yep. All right. So, you know, there'll be a few of you out there. You know, you can only sign up for RAs that are in the unit. If you've got unit six, you'll be limited to unit six RAs um, across the board. There's a few of you. There's a few open spots that I've seen. We've not gone through and looked at everything, but there are some open spots. Uh, check, see if they're in your unit um, and be ready. Uh, our best advice is to have your have your device logged on and ready to go and refresh it at about eight o'clock on yes, Monday the eighth and and refresh. hit that sign up button. What's that? Refresh. Refresh. Um, so you know, it's just one of those things. I guess in closing, it's one of those things to be looking at uh, for this for the sign up, but also during the season. I know I have personally talked to several people that caught one of these regulated areas mid-season, you know, midweek, we're able to go up there and at least get on some elk, if not, if not harvest one. So something to, something to always be thinking about. Um, another thing to close out, we do have some exciting webinars coming up. We're going to shoot one uh, tomorrow. On Got two tomorrow. We'll shoot two tomorrow. Are we shooting two tomorrow? Yeah. Oh God, we are shooting two tomorrow. That'd be too much, too much of me looking at Joe. The two we're shooting tomorrow, which will come up sometime after this video, first part of August. Uh, elk hunting tactics. We got a great guy uh, that that works for us now. That used to be an elk guy. That's a pretty aggressive elk hunter. He's got an interesting take on on how he's been very successful using those tactics. And then we're also going to have an elk calling webinar with uh, a, a elk guide over in Eastern Kentucky, uh, a really good elk collar. I'll definitely learn some stuff, but I think it'll be good for everybody else. Trying to get those out first part of August so you got some time to soak it in, think about it uh, before those bull hunts come out. Um, so yeah, big week at recording. I think we'll end up recording three this week. So, <laughs> all right, with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave Joe alone on his closer. I've been telling him they're pretty, been pretty soft here lately. Uh, this one, this one, uh, I'll, I'll give him a break this time. Make sure he comes up with one for bull hunt. It's because you cherry picked. You cherry picked and you stole my closer. I would say don't despair. Keep checking. It's we can closer. get you a spot. And you stole it from me, so. <laughs> I had it written down on the script, man. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll see everybody uh, next week. And like I said, we got some interesting stuff coming up. All this, all this kind of nuts and bolts, weird stuff in my profile will be over. And uh, we'll get down to get down to elk hunting. So appreciate it. I must I need to stop sharing. Well, let me go ahead and share our uh, share our contact like we always do. We'll leave that up here. I should have stole your thunder on this one. I uh, know. Well, you should have told me that I about messed it up. All right. Thank all you. All right. We'll see everybody next week.